All right. How's it going? Hi. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Brendan. Hello. Hi, How's everybody Ashley. doing? Good, good. Say good. Yeah. in. Yeah. All right. We're going to give it a few more minutes. We're going to let this room fill up. It's filling up fast. It's filling up fast. I like it. <laughs> I love it. We haven't even started. It's already almost 100 people. Really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's awesome I love it. I love that. how's everybody oh. feeling good good, good. i'm ready <laughs> exciting good. oh chicago right, oh, I'm from chicago yeah, originally oh yeah who from down south any any southern representatives in the in the house please any southern representatives <laughs> southern representatives <laughs> <laughs> I need to feel at home right now. Come on. Alabama. There we go. Texas. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Texas. Thank you. There we go. Know. Alabama, Florida, <laughs> Buffalo, Tennessee. Oh, I love this. Arkansas. There you go. Tell me where you're from. Yeah, Definitely. everyone. Shout it out. <laughs> North Carolina. Love it. ATL, Cali. Ooh, Quebec. Yes. Oh, we international. Awesome. I love that. The Bay Area, New Jersey. There you go. Oh my gosh. This is wonderful. Good. Los Angeles. All right, Ashley, you got a you got a lot of people to reach now. Wow. <laughs> Friends. Wow. We are this awesome. is wonderful. This is great. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Now right, we're gonna give about maybe about two more minutes and we'll go ahead and start up. Amazing Denver, Vancouver, Poconos. Pocono. Oh my gosh. Turn that today. There we go. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. They're almost as international as you are, young lady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Down from around the world. Yes. Yeah. Really. Amazing. All right, Denver. Denver is. Yeah. All right, Ashley, you ready? Yes, let's do it. You sure? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm posting all the greatness. You're posting already, yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll give it a few, we'll give it one more minute, and then we'll start this up, okay? Awesome. Give us some more time. Oh my, it's 120 already. That's beautiful. Amazing. That's beautiful. Very, very cool. Everyone wants to know how to improve their acting skills. <laughs> That's right. She's going to give a lot of information today. So get your pens and paper or tablets or whatever you're going to record on, please. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because we are ready. We are ready. Amazing. South Carolina. Love okay. it. All right, Kate, you want to give them another minute or two or you want to go ahead and start to say? Well, you think, I think let's, uh, let's rock and roll. Let's rock. Let's, let's go. Yep. Do it. All right. If all minds and hearts are ready, everybody, let's get this going. Hello, everyone. I am Brandon Horton. I will be your host or actually co-host because I have Kate, head of all casting here with me. She'll be hosting us alongside me. Um, we have a lot of information to give to you today but I'm gonna give you a little information about myself before we start. So I'm Brandon Horton, I'm an actor just like you. I'm here to get knowledge, but I'm also going to uh, kind of draw the, kind of steer the ship of this interview with Miss Ashley Lauren Elrod. So I am an actor. I've been on many, many sets, uh, Stars, BM, uh, BMF, um, let's see, Atlanta, the last season that just came out. Um, Ellen's Game of Games, uh, USA Network, Snake in the Grass. So I'm here to gather information alongside you because you are my peer, but we have a very, very, very special guest today. She is a, she's been in this thing for 15 years. She's been an actor, a model, a, um, a, a dancer. She is now a world renowned casting director and she's gonna give you a lot of information with that. Um, in those 15 years, she's also garnered a whole lot of, the respect from all her peers and she's been really well renowned in television commercial film and editorial work and now she has a heart of gold she has a very open heart and so she is for us she is all about inclusion 
uh, safety on sets. And only all these sets that she's been on, she kind of implements that everywhere she goes. So where has she been? Where hasn't she been? That's what I'm going to say. She's been <laughs> international. Uh, she's been to India. And if you've been to any of these countries, tap in in the chat, kind of interact with me. Uh, she's been to India. She's been on sets in Australia and the UK. So across those sets, she's also been around a whole bunch of major players. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Paul Haggis, and that's from a movie called Crash. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that movie, you know, Oscar nominated, Oscar winning, uh, and A Million Dollar Baby. Uh, alongside of a lot more actors that she's been with, she also flips and she can be a content creator for Delta Airlines. Who doesn't like to fly? I mean, come on, man. Delta Airlines, um, Hello Fresh, Marvel. She's in the Marvel universe. She doesn't even know that. Marvel and um, let's see, uh, she has, um, there was one, uh, Robinhood.com. We're saving money, we're investing, right? So yeah. also now she's stepping into the realm of speaking and educating. And that would bring her, that brings her with us today uh, for SAG after. Uh, Mandy.com, the Broadway kids, which brings up the next generation of actors and actresses that come our way. Um, we have Jane University, Actors Connection, the Philly Actors Lab. So her resume is long, it's lengthy, and it's full of a lot of uh, experience, and she's going to bring that to you today. So without further ado, I bring to you Miss Ashley Lauren Elrod. Ashley, how are you doing today? I am good. Thank you for that amazing intro. <laughs> oh my gosh, right? You have so many accolades. I don't even know what to choose from. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah, I get overwhelmed yeah. sometimes. <laughs> so, how, so I'm going to start with this. How is your mental health today? How are you feeling? Oh gosh. That's yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's a great question. Um, overall, doing well, doing good. well feeling grounded, um, you know, but like we all are going through very real things outside of the entertainment industry, but mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that today too, you know, of keeping that balance and being real with ourselves and yes. learning how to, you know, pursue and push through when we need to, yes. and also rest as well when we need yes. to. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with that being said, now we're in a good space right now. We're in a comfortable space. So I'm <laughs> going to start it off. I'm going to start with our first question. All right. Amazing. Where did this all start? Where was your starting point with your whole career? Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to try to make this as <laughs> in <depth laughs> as humanly possible because the yes. story is grand. Yeah. Um, but I have always been a performer since I was a child. My parents, you know, had me in ballet and ice skating and mm -hmm. all of that when I was young. And then I was also a, an equestrian rider. I com competed heavily, actually, half of my life. And then I came to the point where as I was getting older, I was like, okay, well, do I want to pursue going to the Olympics or do I want to pursue, you know, being in entertainment? And yeah. obviously, two completely Absolutely. different spectrums. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I can't do both uh, mm -hmm. at the same time. So have the time. Okay. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it can both, I mean, both uh, uh, doing equestrian riding was like a full time job yeah, outside definitely. of like going to school. So mm -hmm. um, I decided to pursue the arts and I ended up going to Columbia College, Chicago. Shout out to Chicago people. <laughs> And um, before then, I did start modeling when I was 16. Um, I was with Ford and then BMG for many years. And um, I was a fashion model. I got to have a lot of experiences on a lot of TV networks and such like that, modeling for all the local news channels and such. And then went to be featured in Vogue and Vibe Magazine. Oh and um, yeah, and a variety of other editorials, which was a blessing at that point of my life. And then I just came to the realization that modeling, it wasn't something I wanted to do for the rest yes. of my life. I know, right? Yes. Very hard to maintain a fashion yes. model body. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, love to eat. So I just was like, I am not going to do this anymore to myself. And I'm going to just pursue acting and pursue okay. a career in entertainment. So okay. I 
actually um, majored, I double majored. I double majored in technical theater and acting. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to be able right off the bat to have a very well-rounded experience when it yes. came to the entertainment industry. So right. um, technical theater had everything involved from directing. You had to learn how to build a set for a show. You had to do makeup for a show, build three mm -hmm. costumes for a show and light a show as well. So right. if you graduate successfully, you needed to complete all of those levels right. um, for an actual show leading yes. up to senior year. So on top of that, I was acting yeah. and um, interning at a talent agency as well. And I also was jumping on sets early on. Mm -hmm. So I got on set as an extra and I started showing up doing that in my free time. And that led to me actually getting my first speaking roles um, because I went from an extra to getting bumped up to yeah. a stand in. And then you get known and people like get to know your energy and vibe. Okay, and then yeah. I ended up booking a speaking role on every single show that right. I started off as an extra on okay um, so yeah that's yeah. Kind of there's so much <laughs> more to the story I know I know it's a lot to the story the story goes on forever it's there it, the story never ends I know it doesn't. But, so when you are on these sets before you even got to the sets we all know that um, this this industry is all about skill. You know, we're trying to get, we're trying to educate each other on how to build the skills to actually be successful. Yes. So what we're gonna do right now, I'm gonna ask my first question. With the skills that you have, what's been the most beneficial to you and how did you produce those skills? Where did you start with those skills? Oh, I guess, man, that's a, actually a tough question. What's been the most beneficial skill? Yeah. Honestly, I would say the, the main skill outside of training, outside of, you know, really trying to be the best actor you can be in regards to classes and, and being on set or being on stage. Honestly, the biggest skill that's been beneficial for me is the skill of connection and the skill of, I wouldn't even say networking, I would say um, relationship building. Yes. That has played a major part in me being able to be where I am now as a casting director, as a producer, and as an actor. I have had moments where, I'll give you an example, for instance, I booked a HelloFresh commercial a year ago, and um, that was wonderful, and I was on set, it was a three-day shoot, and the last day, the producer came up to me and said, hey, I saw in your email um, header that you also are a casting director. We need someone to cast this voiceover for this commercial can you do it? And can you have people like submit by tomorrow? <laughs> and, you know, I didn't get off set till like, you know, midnight that night. And I had to go home and, you know, get all of that done and get them sent in, um, you know, get people sent in by noon that next day. But something like that, where it's like, you know, you're showing up, you're doing your job, you're doing it well, and you're connecting. And then, something like that can happen okay. or you know you or I've directed something before where I've just been on set doing my job as a, a director or an AD and they're like Ashley we want you to jump into this role like go get into hair and makeup right. and be back on set right. I've had that happen too so right. just being a really good genuine connector with people mm -hmm is a big skill that has gotten me where I am today. That's great. And that's, a, and that's, an, that's an amazing answer. That's an amazing journey that you had. So also, also I wanted to remind everybody, drop all comments in the chat. We have a Q&A going on right now. If you, we're going to do 10 to 15 minutes at the end. So ask your questions that you want to ask Ashley uh, in that Q&A. And then keep interacting with me in the chat. I see you guys going. But yeah. um, so with all those skills, we all know that it's about repetition, repetition. And then there's ups and downs of this thing. Yeah. How, what type of books, what type of studying do you do? Any type of continuing education? What keeps you sharp these days? 
Yes. Yeah. So uh, even I tell people this all the time, even being a casting director and producer and being on that other side of the table, I myself mm -hmm. still take acting classes. I am always trying to stay sharp vocal classes. I'm also a singer. I'm also a dancer. So I'll be at Broadway or steps here in um, steps, a dance studio here in New York city. I will be training with my vocal coach. I will be taking acting classes at Terry Schreiber studio. I also take um, TV film classes at the Brownstone class here in New York to stay fresh. And it's a really cool scenario too, because they make it as if you are on set, they have the camera set up, they have the sets and backgrounds. So you can use that footage for your reel, which is also really great. And it's only $75 per class. So oh it's God. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and actually, they asked me to start teaching a course of my own there. So I'll be collaborating with them soon. So if you're here in New York, keep an eye Thank out you. for that with the Brownstone class. I'm super pumped about it. And, um, but yeah, that's how I stay fresh. That's how I stay um, in the pocket. I love going to see shows. Um, doesn't matter if it's, you know, on Broadway, off Broadway, even just like shows that I get invited to by talent who are in college still or high school. People will invite me to shows all of the time. And I love being mm -hmm. able to observe and also learn in that way, because I think the best way to, to also learn is by looking at what all other actors are doing and yes. seeing how people are in their own techniques that yes. I think is very beneficial. So okay, so, so let's draw for that. What type of techniques are you using these days? Do you have the traditional techniques or are you kind of getting your own lane? What are you doing? <laughs> I was definitely trained um, with the Stanislavski method growing up. That was huge at Columbia. That was definitely something that they always led with. And I mean, it served me very, very well. I loved it. I loved being able to find also freedom and finding my own lane as well. I feel like nowadays things are changing so vastly when it comes to training and so many methods are being explored. And I mm -hmm. think that's good to create more authentic, healthy actors. So it's, you know, you're being able to be genuine. You're being able to create characters that really breathe right. life. And it doesn't feel so constricted to just one specific method, but yes. you're really being able to see what works well for you because one that's method right. will work well for someone else, but maybe that's it's right. not necessarily the best to bring out what you could have on screen or on stage for yourself. Yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm a method and Meisner guy. So I'm just oh, saying. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, bring, I bring the emotion, you know, yeah. Yeah, I'm some <laughs> <laughs> but um, all right. So when we talk about technique and we talk about repetition and we talk about building relationships that we've already had, um, what, what now where you see as a casting director where do you see all of this coming to um coming together um when all these things come together where do you as a casting director because you've been in all of these lanes yeah. uh, as a casting director what are you seeing these days that stands out what puts a person out in front of ten thousand more people <laughs> Oh gosh. I mean, that's, I mean, it's just, it really depends. It depends on the climate. It depends on the nature of what's happening, the trends that are happening. Um, but I feel like everything is becoming much more diverse than it was even five or 10 years ago, which is wonderful. And I feel like it's, it's fair game now for anyone, you know, even 10 years ago, it was still pretty, it was still pretty boxed in of like the certain people that could be major players, the certain people that could make it as, you know, a big named actor. There was a very specific formula of what that person should look like, what that person should sound like, be like, you know, it was very boxed in. Now, thanks to just like social media, I feel like half, like for a lot of things and just the way things are progressing, there's so many beautiful people, you know, being pushed to the forefront that honestly probably would not have been, like yes. I said, 
even five or 10 years ago. And as casting directors, we are trying so hard to advocate, at least I am. And like, like, you know, honestly, casting directors of color that I know are trying to advocate a lot, you know, nowadays to make sure that things are being truly diversified and inclusive for all. And that we are making sure even for disabilities too, like we're really Mm -hmm. trying to push that as well. Like people who have disabilities uh, can be actors too. You know, we need much more opportunities for Mm -hmm. those people and we need to be much more um, genuine in regards to that casting process and forcing productions to make sure that they are doing that and they're living up to those um, very honestly simple expectations Mm -hmm. um, that sometimes they try to overcomplicate. So definitely... I feel like things are progressing. We still have a long way to go, but it's great to see that there are so many different looks and feels and just of all types of people finally being pushed to the forefront. And I think that's really important right now. The climate is changing, just like you've already said, uh, with the the diversity and we talk about safety on on set. And when you're on these sets, uh, what has been one of those things that you've learned from, you've been on many sets, I see it, I've seen your resume, you've been on all these sets, but what has stood out that you've taken from another actor that you can add to your repertoire of, sk- of skills that you already have to kind of boost your skills a little bit more? Have you picked anybody's brain? Have you got any little tidbits? Can you share with that? Oh my gosh. I feel like I've had so many great conversations with so many people, most, yeah. especially directors too. Um, I honestly, so acting wise, so I'll give you two. So directing yeah. wise, Paul Paul will always stand out the most to yes. me. Um, Paul Hadges, because he, first of all, was just such a humble, beautiful human being. Mm -hmm. And it was so refreshing to be around that because not everyone in the industry is like that. Um, I'm going to be real, y'all. Like, not everyone everyone in the industry is for you, you know, like not everyone is looking out for the best interest at heart, which is why Mm -hmm. I'm on talking about that and advocacy for actors, making sure people are safe and wise in regards to all of those things. But he definitely was one of those people where it was just like, you know, the 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 good vibes just oozed Mm -hmm. off of him and you know he just really was encouraging in regards to me and I was I was like 23 when I booked that uh gig him and just the way he encouraged me to you know make sure to take care of myself and you know to keep pushing forward and um you know to believe in the star power that I had that he saw which was amazing hearing that from him I'm like why (laughs) <laughs> um it was very awesome and I'll never forget it I'll, I'll, I always hold on to that when I get you know a little discouraged yeah. um, acting wise uh Kevin Pollock was super fun to work with and I feel like the times where I got to kind of pick his brain he's just one mm-hmm. of those very straight shooter type yeah. people <laughs> where he's just like just freaking do it you know yeah. like you got this he was like you know That's you right. just gotta you just got to go out there and you got to, you got to just be who you are and you're going to attract what you're going to attract um, right. what you want um, from your career. And right. that always will stick with me too. That's great. That's great. So all these, so as we know, all these experiences, you know, they kind of culminate to a peak and you're getting to your peak and you keep on pressing on, you keep on climbing that mountain. But yeah. one thing that I wanted to ask you is to even get in the room, to even get on those sets, uh, yeah. you had you had we're going back to technique and back and back to skill. Uh, what, how important is script study, and how important are monologues? Can you tell me those things? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's start off. So monologues. It's interesting because you know back in the day, like monologues were huge, <laughs> and uh, you know it was like, oh, you have to have a monologue prepared. You have to have a monologue. Mm-hmm. Prepared, especially right. if you're doing theater. Now yes. you'll probably notice that monologues are not as big or needed mm-hmm. 
as they used to be. Now right. it's kind of like you're going to be asked to do a scene or you're going to, yeah, I mean, mostly it's most like mostly it's going to be a scene um, yep. unless you have a monologue and then they'll just say, okay, we'll hear the monologue. But mm-hmm. nine times out of 10 now, it's going to be a scene, which I personally love because, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, you're going to need to do that anyways, especially for film and TV. So That's you right. might as well have that experience. You might as well be learning how to get into the scene off the cuff, especially if it's <laughs> read yes. um, so you can always be prepared to jump right mm-hmm. into that character and yes. be, like make that scene come to life um, which brings me to script study definitely super important I think mm-hmm. everyone should always be even if you're not on set e- like if you, even if you're not on set that's part of your job as an actor to always be looking at scripts right. I think it's So it's something you should always be doing. And if you're not doing it, start doing it. Definitely just start grabbing scripts from old TV shows or even new ones that you like or movies and such and start dissecting them. Start going through them as if you were, you know, preparing for that role, creating that backstory for yourself (laughs) or that character and going through those moments beat by beat, creating those beats. And then yeah. recording yourself, you know, having fun, maybe getting together with a few friends and, you know, like acting as if it's, you're doing a self tape, for instance, and going over that one little chunk of scene and keep yes. doing that week by week, you know, or a couple times a month to keep yourself right. fresh and keep yourself learning. And um, yeah, just being, getting better at honing that skill, especially in a, a lot too, you'll yeah. notice you have to do a cold read at any mm-hmm. time for you yes. to be faster in regards to picking up that scene mm-hmm. and being in it. All right. So we're going to talk about that. Cold reads, building skill, building repetition, and being comfortable in front of the camera, correct? Yeah. So those yeah. are all things that we are, all have to work on. We have to work on those things a little bit more, yeah. even when we're seasoned, correct? So we always sharpen our swords and we also uh, try to press on uh, and be as comfortable as we can. Now, I'm going to talk about something that's more technologically advanced (laughs) where we are now with a casting director. So we are doing a lot of self-tapes now. Yes. And you see a lot of that. You see a lot of the self-tapes. You see a lot of the, the, um, we have individuals that don't have representation, who don't, who can't get headshots. How do we as actors if we don't have the representation, how do we get those headshots and how do we get those reels? Like, how do we put those things together? Is that something that we can do at home that you've seen us work? Oh, you muted, you got muted. There you go. Wait, can we hear you? The lost cam? <laughs> Brendan, oh. come back. Oh, no, there you are. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh okay, God. good. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> You're good. All right, so we're back. All right, here we go. Okay, so for those that don't have representation, how can yeah. we put the headshot and how can we get the reels that gets it in front of you that's impressive and it doesn't look like homemade? How do we do that? Yeah. Um, so nowadays, you know, if you do have like a pretty decent cell phone and a decent, like solid color wall background, if you absolutely cannot get a professional headshot just right Mm -hmm. now, definitely just make sure, you know, you have like a good color on that really complements your skin tone. I actually used to be a headshot photographer back in the day. Um, so I always loved helping actors get everything ready from head to toe colors Mm -hmm. for sure are wonderful so making sure you wear a good color that complements your undertones and making sure you know you just crop it just so where it looks you know pretty nice and you have the good angles going on whether it's like I can't do the whole pose thing now (laughs) <laughs> you know, there's certain angles too that even if you are doing a cell phone shot, that'll make it look like it's not a cell phone shot. That's correct. I got and you. prop it in a way where it, it it looks pretty decent for the time being. But yes. even if yeah, if you have a good little iPhone or you know the latest Android, um, right. you can really take a pretty stellar you know portrait yes. shot 
that'll right. be it'll suffice for the time being but that being said you know headshots are an investment I totally yeah. get it but there also are a lot of great photographers out there who yeah. you know charge a they don't charge a crazy fee like some mm -hmm. I think the maybe here in New York, I have a good friend who's a headshot photographer. His yes. starter package is $350. Right. So it's like, you know, put away that couple hundred dollars per paycheck and mm -hmm. you'll be good. But the, right. you know, one of the greatest headshot, headshot photographers that I've shot with who I love, you know, she costs mm -hmm. like $1,200. Oh my had, God. Like, yeah, like that was an investment, <laughs> but you know right. what? It was worth it. I get a no. lot of call back call-ins from those really? headshots and you know it included the hair and makeup and all of that jazz and um you know but it was an investment right. but do I do you need to pay twelve hundred dollars for headshots no there are yeah. all great photographers that like I said charge 350 or thereabouts yes. um yes. so it's all about what's feasible for you and just making sure they're a good industry standard headshot I'm very yes. big making sure actors aren't wasting their money in right. regard to shots. There are a lot of people who try to say they're headshot photographers, but they're not. Like if mm -hmm. they're a wedding photographer, yeah. they're probably not a good headshot photographer. I like, got right. You know, they're <laughs> great at taking portraits or get it great at wedding shots, but that's not who you want to use for a headshot mm -hmm. photographer. Right. So if you're going to spend the money, don't be lazy, do your research, understand right. what industry headshot looks like and yes. make sure investing in that because there's a trend right now of what those look like and you want to make yes. sure you're on trend and not yeah know, absolutely not. so when you have these headshots and you put them out there and you're hoping for the best crossing your fingers and saying please get me as a as an I want you as an agent or I want you to represent me um mm -hmm. what in as in addition to that they have to have some type of resume what's a what's a good resume builder uh when we talk about skills and trying to oh, progress yeah. into this what's a good resume builder to have i know we talked earlier about all you know the extra work and people frown upon those that extra work yes. but that's needed right oh yes oh yeah. yeah i mean like i said that's how i got i yeah. literally got five speaking roles right like before i graduated college on major TV shows because I started off as an extra, literally. Right. Right. And it's like, I like I said, I showed up. I was on time. Mm -hmm. I was timed. I did my job. I did what I was supposed to do. And like, I always tell actors when they are starting off and they do, do want to do extra work and just hop on set for the experience, show up. Don't try yeah. to show off. <laughs> like, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because, but yeah, also like the directors of eighties, all of them, they take notice of that. And uh, like, literally I am still good friends now with those mm -hmm. people people who started off as ADs back in the day, this is over 10 years ago. I still yeah. am in contact with them now to this day. That's and right. now they're directors and big producers at different production companies. And it's literally like, they were the ones who were like, Hey, like, yeah. we're going to have you do this. We're going to have you say this line. That's right. you know? And it's just because I like, like I said, I showed up, I didn't show off. I was doing mm -hmm. my job and they took notice. And also I was friendly and I, I like to talk to people. I get like to know their story mm -hmm. and that also left an impression. So yes, extra work can be great, especially right. you can always get bumped up to a stand-in. That's what happened for me. And I learned so much being a stand-in and I literally got to experience the best things ever because of that experience with actors, yeah. directors, producers, um, being able just to be right there um, yes. on the front line. And then I was getting asked to, you know, be a stand in for all of the shows. So awesome. it's kind of like whenever they had a show come into town in Chicago, you know, they were like, hey, can you stand in for the season? Yes. Right. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then it led to that me getting bumped up. Because usually when yeah. you're a stand in and they trust you and stuff, they will <laughs> give you a role from my experience right. if they, you know, see that you're good and that you, you know, are not making any trouble or anything. Right. Absolutely. Um, 
you know, they'll do it, but that's a good, that's a good start. Obviously yeah. something to put on your resume, unless mm-hmm. you want to put it under like, just like experience under the experience bit, especially yeah. if you are a stand in for like a full season of like power or something. Yeah. yeah. Put that, put that under experience to let them know that you do have experience on set. That's definitely that's nice. nice to see. Um, awesome. but also just a builder, mm-hmm. you know, indie film. Yeah short films, mm-hmm. student films uh, in New York. I mean, these student yeah. films look amazing, you yes, know? <laughs> they are awesome. Like New York yes. Film Academy and mm-hmm. Brooklyn Film Academy. Like all of these kids are doing amazing work that's actually yeah. getting put out there in festivals and winning. So it's right. like, don't knock the film, fe- don't don't knock the college, you know, that's right. out of building up your resume if you're starting right. out because- yeah, these they're doing amazing things. So. That's right. So we're talking about skill development, but also the experience. And when you're in that experience, you're going to get in the battlefield. You're going to be on the front lines, as you say. And yeah. these things come into play. So you have the skill, but you also have to have the professionalism, right? Yes. So that's one thing that I know that you can speak on a lot in depth about professionalism. So in addition to the skill development that we have as actors, all the training all the hours of script study. How important is it being professional on set and having, uh, I get, I call it, I call it set attire. So how do you carry yourself on set and how do you, no, don't make yourself stand out, but make yourself known on set. Um, So for me, I definitely am huge on um, setting the tone and setting the vibe for the set, Mm -hmm. whether I'm an actor or a casting director or a producer, whatever I'm doing on set. Everyone, everyone knows me on the first day because I introduce myself to everyone. I've always been the first person to always introduce myself on set. I'll go to the camera department, the lighting department, everyone literally and be like, Hey, my name's Ashley. What's up? Like, what are you doing on set? Like, what's your name? It's going to be great to work with you. And literally I'm telling you that will always set the vibe. And that's just me. Like I love to set the tone because sometimes you'll walk on sets and people are all like, you know, it's chaotic and everyone's doing their own thing. And like, everyone's kind of also split up in their own cliques and niche, you yeah, know, parts. That's right. and I like to blend. I've always been the floater in life. So I've yeah. always floated around uh-huh. different groups and I just like organically just been there and um, connected different people. People call me the connector. So I've always been that. So I love that's being good. that when I can. Um, I'm just showing up, like I said, you know, to set that tone, set that culture, um, to make people feel comfortable and to make people feel, you know, safe and to also make sure people feel, you know, like, Hey, I can, I can, you know, come to this person if I have a problem or, you know, we can all work together. That actually happened really well on the last set that I was on. I was doing, um, I was actually a production designer on a feature film for BET. And at first, I remember the first day, it was like very chaotic and everybody was like, "Eh." (laughs) and I, and my energy is very mellow in regards to those things, like for it to be set. So I just went around and I sort of started introducing myself to everyone. I was like, hi, my name's Ashley. How are Mm -hmm. you? It's going to be great to work with you. And I'm telling you, that set the tone for that <laughs> whole set. Because awesome. everyone started at, everyone started following suit. They were like, hey, how are you? They were saying good morning every day. Mm-hmm. You know, people bringing each other coffees and stuff. Right. And it was, it was honestly awesome. And it made sure. me feel really good just to be like, I am happy that we could just do that. And yeah. it could just be fine. And even when we got in the heat of the moment that mm-hmm. like people would come back and be like, Hey, I'm sorry. Like we, it got a little heated back there, we're but you know, we're good. Yeah. And that doesn't happen a lot, you know, <laughs> doesn't happen a lot. Right. Sometimes people will just do things on set and it's like, okay, that wasn't mm-hmm. cool. And you know, they don't say sorry or anything, but right. that that instance for those 60 days I worked with them everyone was so respectful and just it was a different vibe and I I think it was just because I made that conscious choice to be like I want to set the tone on this and it'll be good um so if you if you arrive to set 
mm-hmm. you know, to set the tone and be you and be kind yes. and, you know, make sure, you know, everyone, like you, to understand you're there to be a collective and it's not about right. you, it's about yes creating this beautiful work of art together with other people yes. that when things transform from it just being a project but mm-hmm. you know into like a little mini community for that time that's right on Saturday. that's good that's that's a good tidbit that's a good piece of information and I think um before you get there uh, there's a mindset that you have to have and you have to kind of lock in on what you want to be and how you want to portray yourself and that's a good that's some good advice on uh, how to carry yourself on set. So I'm going to, I'm going to backtrack one more time. <laughs> one more time I'm going to backtrack to, um, we're going to backtrack to, let's see, getting um, the information that you need to get put to put together to actually get into the room to see you. Right. So what if you're low on change? <laughs> you know, what if you are low on change? What if times are hard and you want to break into this industry? What are, do you know any, any, t- any things that, that people can do at home, uh, can, not to cut corners, but to just to kind of keep yourself in the battle yeah. um, with uh, trying to get into the room to get to get the part and or to even just get in the audition room. Uh, what are some things that those that are low on money can yeah. develop the skill to uh, to actually get in front of you, people like yourself? Mm-hmm. Um, well, now, thanks to honestly, like one, I think, good thing that came out of COVID. Um, yeah. you know, none of us want to go back to that time Absolutely. ever again. No, we don't, um, want <laughs> right. we don't want to do that. But, right. you know, it birthed a lot of things online, like this, for instance, where yeah. you literally can get in front of a casting director or agent for little to no money and right. just be able to connect and collaborate and mm-hmm. get questions answered. Um, so that really has been a plus and an upside to everything that came right. out of the pandemic. There are yeah. so many different things out there. Like I teach a lot for Actors Connection and mm-hmm. a lot of their things on there will be very, very feasible, very, very feasible. Mm-hmm. Even if you do one a month, you know what I'm right. saying? to do a training with, and they have some of the biggest casting directors on there that cast for everything. Right. And even if you do that once a month for $50 or $45, whatever it is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's the three week training with that person yeah. who you then yeah. can get their information afterwards to check in with them, you know, if to be a reader for them possibly, or, you know, just stay in touch for right. your consideration. You mm-hmm. can do that. It's right. all about honestly budgeting and planning out as best you can because right. nothing is impossible. Like I have been to those moments where I literally was broke, broke, yes. and I did not have right. any, you know, I really did not. It was like barely right. two pennies to put together. Yeah. And I had to make it work. Like I had to make it work and I did, you know, and um, legally <laughs> I did. Well, hey, you're going to bring that tone down, bring the tone down a little bit. <laughs> you know, I, I did though. I had to make it right. work. And yeah. um, a lot of us always at one point or another will be in those situations where, you know, we have to figure out what works best for us. But I think right, right now there's so many things online. Also to YouTube, right. you know, Absolutely. Oh, there's so Absolutely. many amazing casting directors, agents, and people mm-hmm. that are now utilizing social media to yeah. provide free resources, information, trainings, where you, there's no excuse for you not to be looking at something and learning something from someone every That's day. Exactly right. That's exactly right. You know? Yeah. So yeah. when we talk about it, we have the resources. Uh, right. Not everybody knows about these resources. And I'm glad you spoke about those things because having these resources along with a skill that can get us to being really, really successful uh, in this in this industry. And all right, I want to remind everybody, keep putting your put, keep giving your Q&A. We're going to get to it in a second, but I have one more question at the end. Yes. Um, and then get to the Q&A. Uh, here coming up, uh, but keep the chat going, guys. I love it. I see what you're, I see what you're throwing out there. What to you, and this is a last closing thought for you. It's not even a question. What to you defines success to you as an individual? What is success defined by Ashley? Oh, man. 
Good questions, Brandon. I know, I'm going to, I know, I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, it's so funny because just even with everything, I'm, I'm in a space right now, currently in my life where I've been kind of trying to process the wins more, you know, cause as, as humans, I think we tend, we tend to process the failures more than yes. we do the wins. Yes. And I have definitely been really, really working on this the past year of just saying, Hey, you have accomplished a lot by 33 years old, you know, that, you know, most people would dream of. And it's like, you need to focus on that and focus yeah. that that is, true beautiful success for yourself and I think it's just like constantly we have to break down what that is for us and what that looks like for us because if we measure it to being on the red carpet and being you know on the poster for Marvel you know we are always going to feel um on a depleted depressed So yeah. n- feeling like we're not doing enough or doing mm-hmm. something right. And right. what I realized, and I realized this like a, like years ago in my at the end of my 20s that like that needed to not be my my end goal. Um right. because it'll kill us, you know, it'll kill you. It'll it'll definitely it'll make you not enjoy your actual life that you're That's building that you want to build for yourself. So success yeah. literally is what you make for yourself that's beautiful that is in tune with your alignment of who you are as a human being Mm -hmm. and it's what you create out of it and it's honestly it really is the process it's the journey it will Mm -hmm. never be a final destination (laughs) it it won't it will never be a final destination we will always be learning and mm-hmm. so hopefully we should yeah. always be learning something till the day we die, um, but, Absolutely. you know, and being open to opportunities and newness and redirection, right. um, that is all success. That yes. is all success. That's Us awesome. To survive every day, yeah. you know, learning something new and challenging mm-hmm. ourselves is success. That's great. And so I wanted to, so I ended with mental health. Yeah, excuse me, I began with mental health. I end with how you are at the end of all of this. You have really good energy. All the information that you've given us is going to be really beneficial for us as actors. Um, you probably found some information in yourself and you didn't even know it. You canceled <laughs> yourself a little bit today. But it's, it's all putting us to a place where we're trying to succeed. Uh, and we're always learning, trying to hone these skills that we have, use all the resources that we have, be professional. Yeah. And let's get to the and let's get to your definition of success. So, um, what we're gonna do now, uh, we're gonna go to the Q and A. We're gonna go to Q and A. We're gonna see what our Q and A looks like, and we're gonna ask a few questions. Amazing. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, the first one. Are there any roles I should stay away from that could possibly hurt my career? Are there any roles? That's a good one. And honestly, that is completely at your discretion. Um, I learned as a young actor when I was starting off that I knew certain roles would possibly put me in a certain category. And I didn't want to be the pretty whatever new girl because I did get asked like a long time ago. I had a I had a lot of major auditions. I had a lot of major callbacks. I got flown to LA for, you know, Tyler Perry, when he was first starting off all that jazz. And I knew off the bat that I didn't want certain roles because I knew they would probably put me in a box. I Mm. wanted to be able to be seen as a well versatile actor and Mm. not just someone who is put into, you know, the, the, like I said, the pretty whatever girl in that movie that, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I didn't want that. I knew I didn't want that to be my brand. That's and right. like, like, even so now I had to, I turned down three, um, mm-hmm. audition opportunities for major TV shows. One being P Valley, for instance, last year, right. I knew that I, that's not my brand. That's, that's not your brand. Not, Absolutely. 
I, you have to know your brand, guys. Yeah. You have to know what your brand is, what mm -hmm. your non-negotiables are, what right. your negotiables are. You yeah. have to know what that is for yourself. And that's at your discretion. Um, right. You should be pressured to change that. If you're like, hey, I absolutely cannot see myself playing a stripper on this mm -hmm. show and, you know, showing X, Y, Z, like, you are totally 100% validated to make right. a decision yeah. and no agent, no anyone should be pressuring you to, you know, go outside of those boundaries that you set for yourself That's because right. we all have our boundaries, right? And you just yes. have to make sure you know yours and you let that be known up front with your reps and right. if you don't have reps, just make sure you know that for yourself in mm -hmm. regards to submitting to projects. Right. Um, I always tell people that, you know, it's just, it's important. It's important. And I don't think you miss out on anything by having those boundaries. That's right. So with that being said, all right. So you, so, you know, you have, you have your brand mm -hmm. and you know who you are, Miss Ashley. <laughs> What's your, what was your favorite production? Your favorite production that you were on? My favorite production. Oh gosh. I had so many. Give me your top two. <laughs> Talk to you. Talk to you. Okay. Oh, wow. uh, okay you do what you want. <laughs> yes. Uh, BT is north of the ten. North of the ten was super fun. Okay. Gotcha. Um, like Lopez was in it, and a whole bunch of other great comedians. And right. literally, they were all so sweet, all so personable, and mm -hmm. just really awesome to be around. And right. um, oh my gosh, honestly, the Delta Project was super awesome to be on from this past year. Uh, everyone was just such a joy to work with. The crew, the talent, everyone just really just brought this beautiful energy for this project that we were doing that was also pretty healing and awesome yes. a way for many involved so mm -hmm. that was really great okay so I'm going to go back to the skills we're going to talk about skills again uh so what what is a technique that you use to memorize scripts so for me I and this is just this is a me thing so I That's actually have photographic <laughs> memory so uh -huh. I remember, I can remember anything. I can read a script once and mostly get the lines down. Like it you takes me. Blessed. I'm not, you I'm not lying. <laughs> <laughs> so you it's always been very easy for me to memorize scripts and also faces. Like I never forget a face, even if I oh, met okay. 20 years ago. And this has happened before where people are like, how do you, I was like, no, I'm telling you, I'm going to remember where I know you from. And then I, it'll come to me Yes. 10 years ago at McDonald's. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, how in the heck did you remember that? I'm like, right. oh. but in regards to skills and techniques, yes. I am a big fan of telling actors to read the first line Mm -hmm. Then we read it again and then keep repeating second, third, fourth, right. fifth, until you read the whole thing. Writing it out, writing out the script, I think is very helpful. Writing out the lines word for word on a piece of yes. paper. That's very, very helpful. That's and awesome. to memorizing. Right. Um, and also too, just making sure you're saying the script as you're walking around in different areas. It's actually, I forgot who did the study, but they did a study if you memorize something in one specific spot it can mm -hmm. be hard for you to remember it if you like stand up and go do it on the other side yes. of the room yeah. so um just yeah making sure you're walking around you're being able to get it into your body right. so coming off of your tongue a bit easy easier and then also too if you have a friend that you can obviously bounce off uh, lines and such with it's always easier to get it into your brain that way because you're actually right. saying it out loud and being able to have the lines be heard back and mm -hmm. your brain you know it's, it creates the conversation I'm and sure. so it be just, you know the lines are, are off the page at that point yes. so so for yeah. those that so for individuals uh who don't live in these big cities who don't have uh, access to a lot of extra work or anything like that. What can a person that's in a small town, let's say, I don't know, in the, the furthest corner of the Southeast, try <laughs> to break into this, into this industry? Do you know any way that they can, or any resources they can use to break into it just to get on a set and get the ball rolling? 
Yeah. Um, definitely. Like I said, first off, usually I think every, I think every state has like an acting school or art school or film school. And that's the first thing to do, you know, try to interact with mm -hmm. that school to try mm -hmm. to get onto those sets for the students, um, right. to be able to understand how sets work in that way and learn, um, and just grow your skills and right. uh, network that way as well, because obviously they'll, they won't be students forever, you know, they'll right. graduate and they'll go on to work and, you know, they may remember you for the future, which has happened to me several times. Right. So it's like, definitely use that to your full advantage. Yeah. Um, internships. I mean, there are so many internships and mentorships happening right now. It's crazy for major yeah. And companies, Warner Brothers and uh, Hulu, Peacock, all of them are doing all of these cool mentorships now where right. you can, you know, take the summer or the fall to mm -hmm. learn underneath them, a lot of them virtually. Wow. So you don't have to be in a big city. You can mm -hmm. literally go working from home and doing this mentorship or internship or fellowships. Now they have felt all these fellowships too happening okay. where apply and if you get in you know you have these great opportunities right. to either do it virtually or they're flying people out um to also be a part of the program for however long it is right. so there are a lot of opportunities to break in no matter where you are now right to get in like i said there are great uh websites and platforms such as all casting after connection one-on-one -on -one. um i mean there's so many different platforms where you can be able to connect with people and do your research you know like do your research on casting directors who also also train um who offer workshops from time to time keep a tab on when they're having those things um keep a tab on just their social medias in general because a lot of us you know go live on social media and do this you know um on our on our free time and love to connect with actors that way so yeah so when it comes to headshots what's your who's your go-to headshot person in chicago oh in chicago <laughs> let's see for a feasible headshot photographer feasible headshot. that's good yes. in chicago jen right. stanko is great okay. jen stanko you she is good okay. she's been around for a, a very long time right yeah all right so also one more thing do you have like voice acting how do you break into voice acting um <laughs> I know I'm into it because I have a voice <laughs> but <laughs> um how do you you know curate that voice that the casting director wants to hear mm -hmm. So honestly, voice acting is so broad. It's not, you really, there's no really any curating to be honest, because yeah. there's always, there's so many different beautiful voices out there yeah. that can be used for multiple different things. Now mm -hmm. you need to, once again, know your brand. So if you right. know that you want to do animation, for instance, and you mm -hmm. want to be able to be considered for a 12 year old, you know, little boy, then yeah. yes, you're going to probably need to take some classes yeah on learning how to curate and manipulate your voice for that mm -hmm. specific branding. Some people are however old and just have that naturally, you yes. know, they don't even yes. have to try, right. which is great for them. <laughs> but, um, you know, yes, it does take training. It does take um, a couple classes um, for, for a bit to get yourself to that point. But, right. you know, if you want to do animation, that's a whole nother thing. But usually for commercials, like all the basic commercials we hear from the day to day, you hear right. all the types of types of voices, that's you know, voices, raspy yeah. voices, whatever. It really just depends on what the producer is looking for, yes. for that project and how they feel it matches up with the um, commercial that was filmed. Right. So, but it's, it's really fair game. If you have yeah, a voice, you can be, if you have a voice, you can be in voiceover. A voice acting, right? <laughs> like you can be a voice. Yeah. You can be in voiceover. Like yeah. I said, the only time you really need to make sure you curate it is if you want to do animation specifically. Correct. And that's you. a whole nother ball game, but yeah. Right. So when we talk about resumes, 
Uh, what's a good thing to have or one of the most important things to have on your resume? I know the experience is there and things of that nature. Is there a specific type of training? Are you looking for the training? Are you looking for more experience? Are you looking for more experience and training? Where do you see that going? Yeah, just making sure you have, you know, obviously the title of whatever project you were on, the um, role, whether it was supporting lead and the director or and, and or production company, and then experience, um, What, like I said, if you were a stand-in for power or something, definitely yes. put that on there. Special skills, for sure, put on there. If you're a fire right. torch dancer or, you know, whatever you do as a hobby that you're really, really actually right. good Right. Make sure you're actually good at that thing. <laughs> like don't <laughs> put that you right. want to get far and no. you don't even know what the strings no are. Yeah. You know? You know one. <laughs> You know, if you can't play the guitar yeah. confidently, if you can't play at least one song on the guitar confidently, do not put that you play guitar on there the rest. There you go. <laughs> you may, you know, just don't do that. I, I can't tell you how many actors have put certain things on their resumes and then they get mm -hmm. called in and it's like, oh, um, <laughs> actually, <laughs> make sure whatever special skills are on there, you can do them very well. Great. Um, Great. And then, yes, we do want to see training. If you're in yeah. classes, put that on there, put the teacher's name on there. And um, because, yeah, sometimes, yeah, that plays a part into making sure you're staying fresh yes. and um, you're staying connected. Definitely, especially in LA and New York, they definitely yeah. love to see training on Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not, you've given us so much information today. You've given us a really good time. And I hope you've enjoyed, for, you know, giving that information out today. And I just want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for joining us today. And I wish you nothing but blessings and the best for you. And uh, make sure everybody is keep, everybody keep on posting in the chat. If you have any more questions, maybe we can ask them here in two seconds. Yes. Yeah. Maybe a couple more. Yeah. We're gonna take two more. We're gonna take two more. There Let's we go. do it. All right, Let's do go. it. All right, here we go. All right, you talked about internships. Um, where do you apply for internships? Is there a specific place to oh. apply for internships? Um, there's not like a specific. I mean, there probably is. I mean, I'm yeah. sure maybe someone has created a list. Uh, if not, maybe I should create one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> idea. Yeah. Um, but definitely look at all of like the major talent agencies, I would say first. Okay. Um, yeah. I think it's great to intern at talent agencies as an actor. You get to learn about that full scope of how things work behind um, the desk and being able to just like get more um, informed on what they're looking for, the trends that are happening for that season, et cetera. Right. So definitely look at all the local talent agencies in your area. Look there at them, go. look at their websites, see if they have an internship um, mm -hmm. program, which usually they will have on their website if they do. And if they right. don't even maybe just shoot them an email and say, mm -hmm. hey, I'm curious as to if you, if to, if you offer internship opportunities, right. I would be highly interested. Yes. Um, you know, here's my work resume and mm -hmm. see what happens from there. There are, I mean, gosh, I I just feel like, because it just pops up usually on my Instagram, honestly, yeah. naturally now because of my search feed, but a lot of like mentorships and fellowships and such have been popping up. Like I said, from Peacock, Hulu, Warner, yeah. Warner Media, for instance. Yeah, definitely follow them because they're right. having constant fellowships, internships, mentorships, programs happening right now for people to submit to. So just make sure you follow them on social media because they always have something that they're posting for those opportunities, as well as Peacock, Hulu. Honestly, yeah. every major production company right now are doing an influx of internships and mentorships. Mm -hmm. So just nice. start following all of them keep tabs on their websites, yes. LinkedIn, go LinkedIn. Right. If, if you don't <laughs> yeah. have a LinkedIn page, go on, yeah. like create a, create a LinkedIn page, mm -hmm. follow all of those people. They'll always post on their pages when they have those opportunities opening up. So definitely do that. If you haven't yeah. joined LinkedIn yet, it's a awesome. great, 
great place for that. That's awesome. All right. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. All right. We're going to say our goodbyes. As much as we don't want to say our goodbyes, I want to, I can sit here and talk to you forever and pick your brain about this. And I know these guys, uh, our guests, um, excuse me, our, our, um, our people that are participants that are here, they've enjoyed it. I'm going to say our goodbyes. I thank you for everything that you've done. One more thing. She has one more closing. So people are asking for my handle. So can I drop don't it worry. in? Yeah. yeah. I was going to drop it in there, but that's okay. Go ahead. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. cool. All go, right. Go, 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 go. It's All your right. party. It's your party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys can definitely hit me up on Instagram at Ashley Lauren official. There you go. Um, you guys can hit me up there and then, yeah, we can connect. Always happy to connect. Um, you can Absolutely. also get my website from there too. If you want to, um, sign up for my, um, database so you can be included when I send out castings and right. all that fun stuff. So yeah. Great. Oh, okay. So make sure you missed it, but yeah. <laughs> so like, make sure can't pin it though. I don't think. Yes. All right, so we are going to say our goodbyes this time. Okay, so we have our handles out there. We have all this information that we've had today. Thank you so much, Ashley, for your time. Thank you for all your energy. Thank you, allcasting.com, for allowing us to actually get this information out to these individuals that participated today. And I just want to say you guys stay focused, stay blessed, stay encouraged. I'll see you next time. Thank Amen. you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Ashley. We're really grateful. Thank you so much for coming and joining us and sharing all that knowledge, all the energy. Uh, it's just priceless. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you once again. I and really thank you, guys. You. And uh, we'll see you on next webinars. Uh, and uh, goodbye to everyone now. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye, everyone.